How you guys doing? It's been a while since I've talked to you guys. I took some time off unexpectedly, uh, but I still have been a little bit more productive than my lack of published content seems. So basically after the uh, 2x10 bookcase project, I started in on the chest of drawers build. And first off, that project was gonna be a little bit more in depth. So I knew it was gonna take a little bit longer to do, uh, but what ended up happening is the heat here in the shop really got to me. It really, really, really got demotivating and frustrating uh, working in here. I know there's plenty of other situations out there from other people that have to deal with this, with the heat in the summertime and all that stuff. But for me in here, it was very frustrating, very annoying, uh, changing shirts like three times a day and just sweating all over the place. So what I did is I kept working on the chest of drawers project and basically ended up getting like three days behind just from lack of motivation lack of motivation and at that point I just said screw it I'm gonna take a week off and not do anything in the shop so that's what I did um, I think it was the half of last week and then half of the week before last as when I took the time off and really didn't do much at all um, which felt good uh, so during that time I tried to remedy the situation and uh, get some type of cooling situation here in the shop. So I got a, you can already see it, it's a mini split installed here and it's a AC heat pump mini split. So that'll provide heat in the, in the winter time as well. And uh, it works, it's running right now. It's absolutely awesome. Another thing that I should add to the list of should have done this sooner. Um, but budget wise, I had to wait until I could. So finally was in a position to where I could do so and I love it. So it's an 18,000 BTU unit. This is a 22 foot by 22 foot, um, roughly 480 square feet, I think. Um, 10 foot high ceilings, no insulation in any of the walls. Well, there's like a six foot patch of wall where the uh, door is going to the house that's insulated, I think. Uh, but there's no insulation in the other perimeter walls, no insulation in the ceiling, and no insulation in the garage door. Now I did take some, <clears throat> excuse me, some uh, one, like one inch garage weather stripping just to put on the outside to stop any draft coming through. That's all I've done. And it's gone from like 99 to 100 degrees with crazy humidity in here to right now it's like 75 with very little humidity because that thing pulls the humidity out of the air. So wowzers what a difference i love it um it's only going to be just a little bit better once i get the ceiling uh, or the attic insulation done i'm going to go ahead and blow insulation up there and i'm not sure if i'm going to insulate this garage door or invest in a nicer looking garage door that is insulated which will increase the property value as well as provide the insulation that i want here in the garage i'm not sure which one i'm going to do uh but that's um not a huge priority right now because I know that this is working the way it is um, and it'll get me through the summer and until I can figure out a situation for that. I'm not going to insulate the walls, I don't think, because everybody I've talked to um, has said that basically when you blow insulation into a filled wall or a pre-finished wall, the insulation will, will compress and sag over time, that blow fill cellulose insulation, and then you have these gaps up at the top. Um, plus, I've got purlins in the wall, which is like a horizontal blocking uh, in between the studs, which means I would have to uh, do two holes in the wall per stud cavity. I don't know if I want to do all that. And then also something that's kind of like reinforcing my decision as to maybe not do that is I've talked to several people who have, have had that done, the blow fill insulation into, into pre-existing walls, and they said they didn't even notice a difference. So... If it's working now without it, and I could get the, the um, high points, the things that'll matter the most, which is like the garage door and then the ceiling, then I think that'll be all right. And we'll go from there. Uh, yeah, work on the, the, what is it? The vital few instead of the useful many, if anybody understands that. The chest of drawers project is done. It's complete. It's in the room already. My wife's loving it. Um, I like it. I'm, I'm very proud of that project. It turned out really great. You guys won't see it until next Thursday though. I've got a couple things I need to get done first. Uh, I got to get the plans done for it. I've got to edit the video. There's a ton of footage for that project because it's rather in depth. That should have been two videos, but it's not going to be two videos because 
It's gonna be a sponsored video, and I don't wanna do a sponsored video on half of a project, so it's gonna be the same style of my normal videos, are kind of fast paced, but there's just a ton of stuff to do in building something like that, so the video's probably gonna be long. I did say sponsored video. I'm, I have no objection to other people doing sponsored videos on their content. Um, I've just never done it myself, and I got to a point where just like, why not? If I stand behind the product, and I like the product, then I don't see any problem doing it. So, if you object to that kind of thing, sorry, but I'm gonna do it, and uh, if, let me say that, I'm gonna do it if I enjoy and use and like that product. If I don't, then I'm not gonna do it. Um, no money is worth throwing your, your, your name, your brand, your reputation out there just to get some, some money or whatever if you don't stand behind the product. So, that's gonna be that. <coughs> Excuse me. I also completed a um, second project for this week because I knew the other one wasn't gonna be published till next week. So this week's video and project is going to be a, a bench vise. This is a 36 inch bench vise and I've got 24 inches in between the pipes and some extra sticking off to one side for irregular stuff that has to hang off the side. But anyway, it's basically the same concept as my pipe clamp moxin vise, um, but it's more convenient. The reason I don't use the moxin vise setup that I previously had, I gave it away to somebody who came and visited the shop, but the reason I don't use it is for me, it ended up being not as convenient anymore to put on the bench, take off the bench, put on the bench, take off the bench. And then when I was on the bench, it was in the way because it sat on top of the bench. So, uh, took the same concept, but built it into the side of my work table, made it a little bit bigger, and so far, so good. Uh, I really like it, and time will tell how, how uh, much I use it. But it's out of the way, so I don't have to remove it at all. Of course, it's pipe clamped, so you can pull the pipe out, and then there's no, no obstruction on that side of the workbench. But, yeah, I think I like it and hopefully people will be able to get some ideas out of that. Back to the chest of drawers. I owe a couple people, of, uh, so I owe a couple people an apology. Um, when I started the project, I was looking for drawer pulls, found a set of pine drawer pulls that I liked from Rockler, and instead of purchasing them from Rockler, I posted on my Facebook page, hey, is there anybody out there with a lathe that would mind making these and I'll purchase them from you as opposed to Rockler? And uh, Jackman Carpentry, guy on YouTube, said, hey, I'll make them, but I'm on vacation, so it'll be a couple weeks. I believe that's what he said was on vacation. Um, and I said, ah, I appreciate it, but I'm trying to get this thing done on this particular schedule. I need them a little bit sooner than that. So then uh, Ted Alexander, another good guy on YouTube, um, stepped up and said, hey, I can make them, and I'll have them there by Friday. And at that time, I was like, that's my schedule. It's perfectly with my schedule. I appreciate it. That'd be great. I'll purchase them from you. So he went through the process of getting them sent to me and all that stuff. And basically right when I got them was when the whole heat got to me and I took some time off. So there was absolutely no need in rushing the, the uh, drawer pulls to me. And then there was no need in um, having to deny the first person who volunteered to have them made and all that good stuff. So um, the situation didn't work out as planned. Uh, I very much appreciate both of you guys for uh, all of that stuff as well. I did get the drawer pulls from Ted. They, they look great on there. I want to do something like that again in the future, trying to get some little bit of crowd uh, uh, crowd engagement. I don't know what you want to call it. Some engagement from viewers or whatever on something like that going forward. So I may revisit that idea again, but uh, I do apologize to both of you guys for dropping the ball on my end. It's entirely my fault, and I do... Apologize for that. I got a new phone. I, I changed phone companies and I, I feel like that's like the very first time in the existence of cell phones that I feel like I walked away from a deal feeling like I got the better end of it. Like normally when you go into a, a, a cell phone company, change phone companies, get a new phone, whatever, change your contract. My other previous existence of cell phones, I've always felt like I feel like a little bit, I was a little bit taken advantage of, or I didn't get the upper hand of that deal or whatever, just to get a new phone and stuff like that. But basically, we were, we were with a company called C Spire, which is um, a Mississippi-based uh, cell phone provider. It's a, it's a large company, but it's not international, or it's not nationwide, I should say. So anytime we leave Mississippi, 
Uh, we were getting roaming charges, which my wife travels a lot. I've started to travel just a little bit, so that's kind of a pain in the butt. And then also, here at the house, we moved in last year, uh, a year and a month ago, and we, we don't have any reception at all here in the house. So uh, phone calls normally drop after 30 seconds, and it's just so crazy annoying that I've started using Skype and Google Plus Hangouts more than actually using a phone to make phone calls. So uh, our contract was up at the C Spire company we were with, and we stopped into AT&T just for the heck of it, just to see what was going on. And we left like feeling like, yeah, we actually got the better end of the deal. Because my wife's best friend uh, has AT&T, and then here at the house, she's got great service. So the main thing is to make phone calls at her own freaking house. Um, but basically, they, they, they gave us like, it was like $300 per line credit to switch, and then also $200 per phone to trade in. So we got like a ridiculous huge credit on our bill and then we got two brand new nice phones. These are the Galaxy S6 Active, which is supposed to be the more durable and rugged Galaxy S6. So it's like waterproof and dust proof, which is something that destroyed my iPhone that I had. And then, um, so hopefully this one will hold up a little bit better. But basically we got, we switched over companies, got a huge credit, got new phones. Uh, still have a credit on our bill and our bills for the same features we were getting at the other company. It's going to be like $20 less per month. It's like that never happens. So we ended up switching at that time and um, I can actually make phone calls at the house. And then I realized I don't make phone calls hardly at all. So for whatever that's worth, that was a fun little piece of winning moment for once when dealing with phone companies. So I got some really, really awesome stuff in the mail. You guys are so cool. This is a Red Wings scroll saw art piece. This is from Tim's Woodworking here on YouTube. I'll post a link to the video. He actually put a video out making this. And uh, wow, it's, that's pretty cool. I very much appreciate that. That is so nice. And then also, keeping the Red Wings theme, there you can see it. This red and white magnet holder right here. Not really a magnet holder. It's a paper holder from Forrest Pfeiffer. Uh, red and white for the Red Wings colors. But he noticed I used to have a nail there and I just stick a piece of paper through the nail for my cut list and stuff like that as I'm working. And instead, this is a magnet. So if you have a piece of paper, it's just two magnets that you can uh, hold your work right there as opposed to poking it with a nail and then ended up having to poke it six or seven times because that piece of paper falls out of the nail or breaks through, which has happened before. So that's very cool. Thank you very much very much for that and I'll definitely be using that uh, here in the shop. I very much appreciate that. I also got a ton of stickers. I'm losing space on this cabinet as so many people have pointed out and I don't know what to do after that. So I don't know. Um, I was going to do uh, my metal rolling cart but you kind of can't see it where it was and it's no longer in shot hardly at all. So. I don't know. I'm open to suggestions. Maybe I'll do something with the whole wall space back there and make some type of like frame area because I barely ever use the whiteboard anymore. But a lot of people ask, what am I going to do with the uh, sticker space? I don't know. I'm continually amazed at how many stickers I actually uh, receive. So I don't know. I don't know. But let's get to the stickers that I do have. So. Let's get to the stickers. Real quick before the stickers, I got two pencils from Chris Tittiger and he engraved these with his laser engraver. That is some uh, pretty precise work for a laser. Well, I guess the lasers are pretty precise, but it looks super, super clean. And uh, thank you very much for these. These look great. I appreciate it. First sticker is from Dominic's Woodworks. Dominic'sWoodworks.com. He's got a YouTube channel. Thank you very much. Uh, Dominic Bender, he is in good old Germany. Uh, thank you very much for the sticker. I appreciate it. Got some stickers from Beach Bum Living. Uh, really love this guy's channel. I've been subscribed to his channel for a couple years now and uh, just really good content. I very much appreciate it. And these stickers look awesome. Really good job on these stickers. So thank you very much for these. I very much appreciate it. These are from Jason Hockett. This is uh, I Love Boating. Oh, I guess that's I Love Boating instead of I Boating. Um, BoatUS.com and then a Crown Royal a crown fit for a king crown royal sticker. Thank you very much for both of these. I very much appreciate it. 
This is a piece of leather from Jeff Harris, and uh, that's very nice. Barefoot leather, and doesn't have any uh, adhesive on the back, but I'll put some double-sided carpet tape on it and put it up on the cabinet and use it as a sticker. Thank you very much for that. This is from Evangelos in the United Kingdom. Uh, custom guitars, handcrafted in the United Kingdom. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe he said he uh, makes these for charity, which is very, very nice. Makes guitars, not stickers. Makes guitars for charity. So thank you very much for the sticker and thanks for your work for charity. I appreciate both. Roy Salveson, uh, I hope I said that right. Bellevue Woodshop, he said he sent a an Imperial sticker and then a metric sticker. <laughs> this is uh, Norwegian. Yeah, Norwegian. I thought that's what it was. Um, blew my mind when I when I read that. For some reason, I don't know why, but I always thought this guy was from New York City. I don't know why that, that was the case, but uh, I've been following his YouTube channel for a while. He's got some really great, great uh, uh, builds and inventions and stuff. Um, really awesome, but for some reason, I always thought that he was in New York City. He's not. He's Norwegian. <laughs> so... Bellevue Workshop, or Woodshop in Imperial and in Metric. Very much appreciate both. I thank you for those. Damon Kinney, DK Woodworks. That's his uh, sticker. And then also a Southwest Airlines sticker. He works for the airlines. Uh, thank you very much for both of those. And that just immediately, I don't know if it was intentional, but I instantly thought Donkey Kong when I saw that. Uh, but thank you very much for both of these stickers. I very much appreciate it. This is a magnet from uh, Eric Posenauer. I hope I'm saying your last name right, but this is a Boba Fett helmet. And uh, can't wait till the new movie comes out. Hopefully it's better than one, two, and three. Although I didn't find those to be incredibly bad, but uh, top that's a topic for a new day. Thank you very much for the magnet. I'll definitely put it on the cabinet. Good old Mark Spagnolo, the wood whisperer. Uh, I sent him a sticker and he sent one back. So thank you very much for the sticker and thanks for the awesome videos for so many years. Appreciate both. Andy's Workshop, andysworkshop.ca. He's in Canada. Thank you very much for the sticker. I very much appreciate it. Daffy D's Welsh Woodcrafts, welshwoodcrafts.com. Thank you very much for the sticker. I very much appreciate it. These are from Curtis Harmon. This is a Deem Structural Services. And I think this, he said this was his wife's, uh, uh, wife's logo company that she works for. And this is a sticker from Curtis Harmon and it says, it's white, you probably can't see it, but it's MMH or HWW. I'm not exactly sure. And a quick Google search did not provide any help. So a 50-50 chance of me putting this on the cabinet upside down. Eh, we'll see which way is the correct way. I'm not exactly sure. I'm leaning towards MMH. Although the H looks better when it's like this. H, so, so... It's like the Wheel of Fortune, which, one, which way are we going to go with? I think we'll go with the H on top. I think. I don't know. Could be wrong. But anyway, that's all for the stickers. Let's get these put up on the cabinet real quick. And I thank everyone very much for sending them.